Malta, Wangare, Karua. She is famously known as the Iron Lady, the woman who dared walk out of President Moi publicly in a gathering in Kirinyaga in the year 2001. A woman who is not known to condone any form of intimidation meted on her in terms of dispatching and performing her duties. Evident in her resignation from Fordi Asili in 1992 to the resignation as the Secretary of National and Legal Affairs of the Party in 1997. 2. Resigning as the Minister of Justice in President Kibaki's cabinet in April 2009. A woman who fived the dream of Kenyan women in terms of fighting for the position of the presidency in 2013 after attempt fail by the lady Wangale Madhai and Honorable Charlie Ngiru. In 2022, she was anticipated to bring the gender reformist and ethnic card to the Asimio coalition as Raira's running mate. However, things never went as expected. What happened? In the Women Warrior of Africa history, today we look at Mother Karua in relation to the 2022 general elections. It is not her political journey, but rather what does the failure by the Asimio coalition in terms of garnering even elections from Mother Karua's backyard communicates in terms of Mother Karua as a woman politician in Kenya and the popular expectations and narrative held about the iron lady of our time stay tuned and have it true and real welcome back uh the selection of mata karua or the choice of mother karua as the running mate for baba or raira omuro odinga in the just concluded uh general elections in kenya was received with a lot of vibes and excitement across the country and at this particular time, there was a feeling that actually gender was one to be one of the determinants of who wins and who fails in the 2022 general elections in terms of the presidency. It should be noted that before the announcement of Mother Karua as the running mate for Baba or as the running mate in Asimio coalition, Baba's popularity was at 32%, according to the popular thoughts. However, after announcing Mother Karua as the running mate, the popular thoughts that were done the next week revealed that Papa has had increased the percentage of popularity by 7%. Now it was at that nine, and his competitor, the Kenya Kwanzaa Alliance, read by the current president of the Republic of Kenya, Honorable Dr. William Samoy Luto, actually had dropped to 35 and with this then there was the conviction that actually gender was the thing to talk about in the 2022 general election and therefore could maybe be a determinant in terms of who wins and who fails. Specifically, the choice of Mother Karua came with three major things. She is one of the strongest women politically that Kenyans ever had. A woman who was at the forefront of even fighting President Moi and his totalitarian regime. And therefore, people felt that she was a reformist. She is one woman who talks about reforms, reforms. This is the same agenda she had in 2013 when actually she decided to fight for the position of the presidency in this particular country. Famously known to fight for justice and human rights, the popular notion had it that this is the perfect woman in terms of reforms that the country actually needs. Secondly, mother brought in the gender card or she was anticipated to bring in the gender card. You know, we have been talking about women empowerment politically, etc. Now, the choice of mother Karua as a running mate sent a message that actually somebody is thinking about women. But on their, their senior coalition, it could be like, let's use a woman to lure women, fellow women to fought for us. So she came in in a way that she also presented to fill the gender card that has been somehow unfilled or so empty in Kenya's elective positions, especially the top position of the presidency. 
And finally, the ethnic card. For the first time, Mount Kenya did not have a very, let me say, focal presidential aspirant. And therefore, the choice of Mother Karua from Mount Kenya as a running mate, and given the fact that she has even tried to be to fight for the presidency in 2013, it's not like she's somebody who is upcoming, brought out the image that Mount Kenya at least could get something in terms of who, in terms of this national cake, you know, in terms of we are in power. But all these expectations did not come to a reality. And one could wonder why is it that Mother Karua was more of a full package at face value to the Asimio coalition? What happened? First, when we look at why Mother Karua actually uh, could not even bring forth from his backyard, we should also not forget that her biggest political rifle um, Ani Waiguru is also from Krinyaga and Ani Waiguru had also done campaigns for the Kenya Kwanzaa Alliance. At the same time, when you look at Mother Karua, the moment she was declared as the, um, the running mate of Asmio Coalition, we saw people now started digging deep into th what happened way back in 2007. And people now started talking about she was the Minister of Justice and Legal Affairs when President Kibaki was sworn in a few minutes to 7 p.m. in contested electoral assaults. Even when Ponfez Mwangi, the human rights activist in Kenya, tried to cleanse all this mess in Twitter, people were very focal to reply back to tell Ponfez that Mother Karua was there and the fact that she was a cabinet, or she was the... Secretary, she was the minister by then in Kibaki's cabinet. There's no way that she didn't play a role in the swearing in of President Kibaki. We saw her designation from Kibaki's government also being brought on to portray her as a person who actually does not stand to fight for what she believes, but that person walks out. And this was very clear in the presidential, in the deputy president's debate, where even his rifle, the current deputy president of the Republic of Kenya, Honorable Gashawa, asked him, her, if you couldn't work with Kibaki, do you think you can work with Papa? Keeping in mind that in 2007, Mother Karua and the Baba could not agree. In fact, when James Orengo were calling for the recount of the elections, of the results before they are declared, Mother Karua said no. So when you look at this aspect, the 2007 thing, and pressing it in the context of the 2022 general election on what mother was supposed to bring on board, then it tells you that actually we were putting a lot of expectation of mother on Mother Karua to deliver when actually there was a lot that we had not considered as citizens, as women, or as even the coalitions that actually chose her for the position of the running mate and expected that once she's in the, in the coalition, then that is a direct ticket to state house. Several times when she spoke about justice, people could remind her that which justice is she speaking about when actually they feel that the same justice was denied to Baba in 2007. So you see, while she's a woman we know who fights for justice, she's a reformist. The fact that people have to go back to 2007 and bring in the conflicted results, which she was not even the competitor, tells you that they portray her as a double-sided person. She is not true to the cause that she we actually know for her for. And then comes the aspect of the tinic. Card. I don't believe that actually the Tinic card was something as the newspaper, uh, as the co co commentators and political analysts were putting it. I don't think that the Tinic card thing in terms of the selection of Mother Karua was something to hold water. And why I'm saying this, for the first time the Kikuyu community did not have 
um, a political, like Asilia's presidential candidates, all are popular presidential candidates. And therefore, we, didn't not, we did not expect them to turn out in large numbers, Komera Komera, the way they did in 2013, when it was Operation Save Our Sons from ICC. And in 2017, when it was Operation, you know, we have to give Uhuru Kenyatta the party day. So when you look at this, at the previous um, elections that we have and the 2017 elections, it was somehow different. Without a, a top president, uh, a candidate for the top seat, the Kikuyu community and the Mount Kenya region generally did not turn up in large numbers to, to vote. And this is evident even when uh, the Kenya Kwanzaa coalition got votes from there. The turnout in Kikuyu land and Mount Kenya region as a whole the, in 2022 general elections cannot be compared to the previous elections. And then when we talk about this ethnic thing, we are talking also about ethnic kinipings. We need to understand exactly from which communes, communities do we come from and how does gender then play a role when it comes to these things that are Christian, that public space things. So if we say that Mother Karo was bringing an ethnic like to fill the ethnic bag for a senior coalition in Mount Kenya, we are getting it wrong because honestly, we know very well when we have a man and a woman, we, because of these gender stereotypes and gender downtrodden of women in politics, you realize that then definitely a man who is not even, let me say, that so much capable is given more hand, a upper hand than a woman. And therefore, um, Honorable Gashawa, in as much as it was his first time uh, to run for this position as the deputy president of the Republic of Kenya, and it was just like a first time member of parliament, he had a upper hand because of the, ethnic, the gender stereotypes we have in terms of commanding ethnic kinship in Mount Kenya than Mother Karua. We saw people raise questions concerning even the marital status of Mother Karua, and one could wonder, do we really have to put marriage and somebody's responsibilities or abilities to lead in the same basket? So you see, and then there's that aspect of God. One coalition used a lot of issues to do with religion and they, there was a lot of contextualizing and putting religion and mingling it with the politics and the campaigns of 2022. And at some point, we saw uh, Mother Karua in a way kind of questioning the kind of God that um, the current president and his running mate and his deputy actually were worshipping. So when you see in a country where people are like more religiously and inclined, it is interpreted like you are an artist. I saw people tweet that whole oh, because you don't believe in god you want to bring this country into doom etc so i think mother karua as a woman has the ability and the potential to read this country but her choice as a running mate for baba was not actually well timed all it came at the wrong time and it was not wisely thought and I believe that this, the fact that also Mother Karua decided to work with people, he ha, she has constantly been criticizing in terms of leadership in this country, working with Uhuru, working with Baba, also portrayed her as, you know, the normal politician. She's not unique from the rest because it was not like, it's not about us Kenyans, it's all about their political interest and therefore i just so feel that the gender the ethnic and the reformist card of mother karua failed one because of historical events that have taken place in kenya and these things in one way or another implicate her in funny situations that it is very difficult maybe to convince the common citizenry that she was not part for example of swelling in president kibaki and secondly the fact that Leadership and ethnic kinship actually tends to be patriarchal and she being a, women, a woman. So the people from her locality tended to focus more on the man part than the woman part in terms of the leadership and doubting what she can do. And finally, the state coming out clearly like they are supporting their smear coalition also 
kill the morale of the Kenyan citizen in terms of voting for their senior coalition and therefore in the process also letting down Martha Karua as a woman running mate in that particular ticket. The Kenya citizenry felt like we have been going through hard economic times and when we have a state supporting a candidate in these elections, we are going to continue with the same story and therefore we need some new blood. So that's what I can talk about in terms of the ethnic gender and reformist um, card that we anticipated from Mother Karua that which actually did not bear the the fruits as we expected but all is not done still women in this country did so well we have counties that came out to give women leadership uh, positions we have now more governors more senators uh, who are women and that shows that the country is heading to the right direction and i believe that if mother karua fired as a president in 2027 on her own ticket perhaps the story could be different and stay tuned and let's keep this conversation pale kwa machats and see what's happening.